State Controller Tom DiNapoli, thank you very much for joining us. You must feel very good. It was a long night, but it ended up being a good night uh, on election night. So I'm a little tired, uh, but certainly feeling uh, very humbled and honored that uh, we prevailed in a very tough election climate, and uh, it's great to be the people's choice. Do you feel vindicated because a lot of people, A, wrote you off for dead, B, said you couldn't do it, the governor didn't, uh, governor-elect didn't endorse you, didn't campaign with you? We were outspent significantly, uh, didn't have the independence party line as, as others did. There, there were obviously many challenges. The climate was not great for, for Democrats in many parts of the state. I, I don't know if vindicate is the right word. I certainly, uh, I, I'm certainly pleased I stayed the course in terms of, of uh, what I'm about, who I am, what our message was, and, and uh, I very much appreciate the fact that many New Yorkers got it. They weren't fooled by the commercials, all the negative ads. And we had tremendous support, you know, on the ground in terms of, of a real effort to, to get out our vote, and, uh, and and it worked. Is that why you're here? Because you spoke at the labor breakfast this yeah. morning, and labor played a huge role in your campaign. I mean, did you feel compelled to come to thank them to show your support? Well, I, I always like to come to, to Somos to support my colleagues uh, in the Hispanic leadership that put this event together. And Felix Ortiz is the new chair of the task force. We were seatmates in the assembly. He's a good friend. His first conference, I want to show my support for Felix's leadership. But certainly to have the opportunity uh, to speak to the labor community this morning, one of the first groups I've had the chance to say thank you to for their support. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity. A lot of, of uh, sweat and hard work went into uh, my effort. And to have the support really across the board of, of labor in New York State uh, made, the, made, a, made a huge difference for me. You and I spoke about this during the campaign, and your opponent also sort of used it to criticize you that you were too close to labor, too beholden to labor. <clears throat> How are you going to ensure that there is independence between yourself and the labor community? Well, independence is, is key with what the control does. You have to call the shots as you see them. You need to be independent of the governor, independent of the legislature, independent of all, all the different um, constituencies or interests. But I received the support from labor not because of any anticipation of what I would do. I received the support because they looked at my record. I've had an open door with labor. I've had a, I've had a cooperative relationship with the labor in the agency that I run. Uh, I, I, have, I have been outspoken on the budget, on our audits, and they know what kind of person I am. And, you know, as someone once asked me, why, why did labor support you? I think part of it is that's my background. I grew up in a union household. Those are the values that I represent. And I said very clearly, that, that the choice was between the middle class values that I had versus the worst of the Wall Street values of my opponent. So it's not a question of being too close. I, I'm going to be the same person I've been for the last you know, three and a half years. That, that approach is going to continue. Do you think the fact that the governor-elect did not endorse you is going to make it easier to hold his feet to the fire when the budget battle comes to four? Well, you know, again, this office needs to be independent. Uh, I've served with two governors, and when I've been critical, of the budget and spending in both cases, I was, you know, attacked back by them. But there is always that institutional tension, and 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 you know, I I, I have always said I'm running, not to be the governor's controller. So that independence uh, is 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 fundamental to any success being controller. That's what I've done. That's what I'm going to continue to do. This Times Union has a story today about an audit that your office started. Um, fairly, not too long after you after you were elevated by your colleagues um, to replace Alan Hevesy, it was an audit of a, a portion of the AG's office, and it was actually fairly rapidly shelved. I, and I'm just curious. If no, I, I didn't see the article being down here, but uh, there was an audit that was started earlier this year, a few mm -hmm. months ago, not three and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. And you know, that, that, that's still in the queue to be done. Uh, it's not completed. So there was no, there's no motive for anger. You didn't want to anger Andrew Cuomo, perhaps. It's not a question. That, you know, we we have a, a tremendous workload on audits, and I've been focusing the audit function on the high cost areas. We're doing a lot in Medicaid, the school audits, MTA. We have other agency audits that we we, we put out periodically. That's one of the audits that's in queue. The field work uh, uh, has not been uh, completed. There's still time for that. Our audits take many months, but that, that was not an audit that was started three and a half years ago. I can see what I'm thinking of. Okay. Because it, it, my understanding was, according to your press office, was that the field off, it was it was shelved. Well, sh I don't know if shelved is the right word. We, we There was an engagement. The field work has not taken place. Right. It will. 
Okay, and the attorney general never asked you uh, because he was investigating the, the whole pension fund. The and attorney general never spoke to me. Okay, good. Uh, going forward, do you think that you will be changing anything? And particularly in this campaign, there was a lot of criticism of, I don't know, from Harry Wilson, the management of the pension fund, for example. I mean, obviously, the voters didn't buy it, or to a certain degree, it was very close, a three-point uh, spread between yourself and Harry Wilson. But do you imagine that after this campaign, you will take anything from what occurred during the battle and apply it going forward, changes that you might make? Well, I think less so in terms of anything that my opponent said, but certainly uh, there is the opportunity now to reflect on, on the past three and a half years uh, without the pressure of a campaign going on and um, determine what we w I want to keep going in terms of direction and look for opportunities to have some changes, certainly with regard to the pension fund. Uh, there's always going to be that challenge of making sure that we're doing it right from an ethics point of view, but in this very tough investment climate, making sure that we're being strategic in terms of, of how we're, we're positioning the fund for the long term. One of the other clear differences between my opponent and myself is that I, I am for the defined benefit pension plan that we have. He wanted to eliminate and go to a 401k. So that, that will require uh, uh, my constant vigilance that we are managing that fund in a way that we're maximizing investment return. Uh, we're still absorbing the market loss from 08 and 09. Contribution rates have been going up. We don't want that to continue. Uh, so we need to think about how to, how to make the pensions of, uh, more cost effective from the point of view of those who are helping to fund them, which, you know, which are the taxpayers. But we want to protect that very important benefit. So any new term is an opportunity to look fresh and say, all right, what have we done right? What, where can we do it better? And over the next few weeks, uh, that's certainly what I'll be doing. Are you concerned at all? Because during uh, the past year, Andrew Cuomo has said that he thinks that the sole trusteeship of the Comptroller's Office, which is really the most powerful attribute of the office, should be replaced with a board system. And that, that's also similarly controversial. There have been systems that are boards that, that have had problems. Are you concerned that he's going to push for that legislation? You know, I've said, especially given what happened with uh, Alan Hevesy, uh, you know, we have to be thoughtful and, and open to any suggestions for change and reform. But one of the reasons that we have the best funded pension plan of any of the states in the nation is that it's been the power of the controller to protect that fund from raids, from underfunding, as we've seen happen in many other states. And, and so I do think you need to protect that ability of the controller as an independent elected official to protect that fund. If there are ways to uh, open up the review process, uh, which we've done with how we've changed policies and strengthened our advisory committees. I'm open to a thoughtful discussion in that regard. But uh, just as you suggest, going to a board without really explaining what the board is, I mean, the key question to me is who's going to appoint the board? If you're going to now let the governor and the legislature control the pension fund through a board that they would appoint, I would suggest the opportunities for compromise are even more uh, severe under that kind of a structure. Just in closing, you put out a report this week regarding the state's cash flow. It's not looking good. No. How bad do you foresee the budget battle being in the next year? That's going to be the greatest challenge for, uh, for the new governor, to, to come up with a spending plan that will not only get us through next year, where we're going to have yet another deficit probably in the 9 to $10 billion range. And, and as important, what we haven't done well in New York is, is, is start to make the kind of choices on spending so that we don't have in, in, in the next year and the year after these continued budget caps. That means making some very difficult calls on where to set priorities. It's going to hurt labor. I mean, well, it, it's potentially going to hurt a lot of a lot of folks, a lot of interests. But you know, we, that's why we need to have a, an intelligent discussion. Labor, local government officials, everyone that's affected by the state budget needs to be at the table to come up with their suggestions as to how, you know, we can't wish this away, it's there. So let's get the best ideas that are out there because I, you know, I found with my own agency and running it, I mentioned this morning, we have a labor management you know, discussion process. We've gotten some very good suggestions from our labor representatives on how to save money you know, without laying people off. Uh, I, think, I think more of that kind of dialogue, constructive dialogue, getting ideas out there. Uh, needs to be done, but there, there are obviously going to be some some very uh, serious issues to deal with. We don't know, you know, what the political landscape is. I gather it's still unclear as to which party is going to control the state senate. So that either way will probably be a close majority. So we know how complicated that's been for the past two years. 
So there, there are a lot of treacherous waters out there. My goal as controller is to keep the long-term uh, picture in mind, to remind everybody what the bottom line is in terms of where we're at with our budget balance and wherever possible, be constructive and helpful to keeping the process moving along. Well, Tom DiNapoli, congratulations on your win. Thank I want you. to thank you very much. Thanks, and thanks. I know you've got a plane to catch eventually. Thank so you. thanks so thank much. You. Thanks a lot.